So happy morning to everyone. Thank you, Rakesh sir. Uh, thank you, ma'am, for the long introduction. And sorry, I have been made short uh, for it. And um, uh, with a happy morning, I am very very happy to look at the dynamic participants of this uh, uh, seminar. Uh, and um, uh, uh, the previous speaker, Dr. Maya Ma'am's uh, speech was so nice. Like it was like uh, some way or the other, it is like uh, an extension to what uh, uh, she was she was talking. My presentation is going to be uh, a bit extension to what she was uh, looking into. And uh, the point she actually conveyed when we are uh, strong with the basics, we need not worry about uh, the advancements so all the advancements everything is rooted on to the basics so it was an excellent session ma'am i really uh, admired and i took uh, uh, points in my um, uh, uh, notepad uh, uh, regarding uh, uh, i mean um, your presentation and uh, uh, so with this i will um, i wish uh, that i can go into my presentation so my presentation uh, today's presentation is going to be upon uh, uh, cognitive computing uh, for knowledge discovery in big data. So before getting into the PPT, I will just uh, um, try to uh, crisp it into uh, small bits and pieces so that it, uh, you can uh, the PPT gets uh, I mean the presentation and my explanation gets uh, reaches to you faster and better. So um, um, uh, from the previous uh, speakers, uh, I mean uh, inference we we could uh, get that. Uh, the data is being built or it is being doubled so much like in the previous uh, five years or about uh, the three years it has been to, uh, i mean twice or thrice it has been uh, uh, increased so the size of uh, data is very very huge that in, in that case we have to go for managing that particular big data uh, for managing uh, big data uh, just uh, just like life so for managing a big problem uh, it, it, is, uh, it is necessary that we need to know how to manage a small problem. Okay, so if we are able to uh, manage a small problem, then we can definitely generalize it to solve it, uh, solve the big problem. Similarly, uh, small data is important. Small data is detailed detailed data. So if we are able to uh, manage the data, uh, small data, then we will be able to manage the uh, big data also. So much more focus is i am going to focus upon cognitive computing which is uh, considered to be a, a much unsung hero so we do speak about artificial intelligence machine learning but uh, there is something called as a cognitive computing and uh, uh, i think it makes sense that i uh, throw light upon it because most of the students are uh, ug and pg students and of course there's some phd scholars and postdoc uh, fellow uh, postdoc fellow uh, professors are also there so cognitive computing uh, is what is the thing which I am going to cover and how uh, cognitive computing is actually differs from this artificial intelligence and how efficiently we can tap the uh, potentials of uh, uh, cognitive computing and uh, we're going to see something about it and uh, later on if time permits we can look into how we can apply this cognitive computing to manage this big data. So this is all about the uh, uh, the presentation what we are going to see so this is uh, this we are, i am going to elaborate through the presentation so i am uh, sharing my uh, screen so cognitive computing for knowledge discovery in big data so this is a broad uh, uh, outline of uh, what uh, i have planned to talk but uh, let's see how uh, time permits we will go deeper into it so first we will understand about what is cognitive computing uh, uh, and uh, the, the basics of cognitive computing and how, what, I mean, the basic terminology and, and applications. First, slowly we will move on to uh, uh, knowing the differences between the cognitive computing and artificial intelligence. The, the, the term cognition is a mental action of learning and acquiring knowledge through thought experiences and uh, senses. Uh, so this is a, the, the term cognition is like, is like a learning through experience. Like uh, I, I would like to just quote a very small example for the better understanding of this particular concept. Okay, uh, I have two sons. My elder son is uh, eight years old, and my the younger son, son is two years old. 
So suppose if I want to educate, so educating my uh, 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 elder son is possible at this particular age. Probably educating my younger son, uh, it will take some time. Suppose if I want to educate uh, him that uh, uh, the fire. Uh, I mean, uh, suppose if I am um, uh, 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 I'm um, using a matchstick and I'm telling uh, my son uh, his name is Surya, right? Uh, that uh, please don't touch this uh, Surya. It will hurt you. Okay. So, uh, so if I'm t uh, telling it, and if he's going to acquire uh, uh, knowledge, uh, it, then through the thought process or through the verbal communication. Suppose uh, if he's a, a bit adamant boy that he's uh, he wants to come and touch the mass mastic, the burning mastic, then he will definitely understand then that, that this is this is not there. so his hand will be hurt. So this is through the experiences and senses. Uh, the, this uh, understanding the the fact that. Uh, uh, fire is something uh, dangerous and it will hurt. Okay, so this knowledge, this uh, 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 this know-how uh, of that this particular thing. The, so whenever there is a fire, probably there is a emergency, or uh, whenever there is a big fire, there is an emergency. So this uh, uh, information is being uh, 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 this uh, knowledge is being instilled onto a child's brain. Similarly. Uh, what we are going to do in cognitive computing is that we are making the system to uh, learn and acquiring the knowledge through thought, experiences and senses. So this is what is uh, the meaning of the, you through the thought process and uh, the experience, uh, I mean, uh, the, I mean, uh, based upon the, the past experiences uh, uh, and uh, based upon the senses also. So, so these three things uh, put together will actually make uh, 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 the learning uh, and the computation process much more uh, accurate. Um, uh, second, cognitive computing involves systems that can analyze, memorize, and uh, um, processing to mimic the way the human brain works. So this is a very important concept that distinguishes uh, cognitive computing from artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence, we do appreciate artificial intelligence. We do give a lot of credits and we, uh, but one thing about artificial intelligence is that uh, so whenever we give a correct uh, or I mean uh, the intended uh, um, uh, uh, instruction, the same thing will be uh, uh, done. Suppose by mistake, if we give an unintended uh, uh, instruction, the, uh, the same thing will be carried out over there without uh, applying a, a common sense over there. So whereas in cognitive computing, uh, it involves a system that can analyze, memorize, uh, and process uh, to mimic the way the human brain works. The main uh, concept uh, of a human brain and uh, the artificial intelligence is that human brain has common sense, whereas the computers doesn't have a common sense. That actually do, uh, the, the, the basic uh, distinction between a human brain and a uh, uh, computer brain or system brain is that uh, it lacks uh, common sense. So we are adding this particular component also onto the computing. So we, we call this to be the cognitive computing. It can recognize, understand, analyze, and take the best possible result or uh, near possible result out of human uh, um, about the human brain. So, suppose if we are um, uh, given with a lot of choices. Uh, so, uh, so, for example, if uh, uh, a person is very, uh, let's consider um, uh, uh, a person is very um, interested in watches, wristwatch. Okay, suppose if uh, I'm provided with a, um, a table and uh, the, uh, the table is being um, uh, and about 50 wristwatches, 5050 wristwatches are being uh, um, displayed on the table. As a human being, I, I will be able to understand. So what is my taste? Like whether I, I need a, a digital watch or an analog watch, whether I, I want a stra strap watch or something like uh, a chained watch. If, if chain means what is the color? If strap means what is the color? Whether I need a big dial or a small dial. All these things are already learned in human brain. That is my characteristic. So with that, we I can make the best possible decision. So we are making the system to make that particular decision. So that is what is about making making the human brain. Uh, so recognizing, understanding, analyzing, and taking out the best possible result uh, about the human brain. Cognitive computing system learns and interacts naturally with people to the extent with what humans or other machines could uh, do as the uh, do on their own. So as I said previously, the same thing. 
so it can help uh, people uh, make a better decisions by penetrating the complexity of big big data so here, here is what is like exactly the problem statement comes into picture so cognitive computing can help people make better decisions by penetrating the complexity of big data a very uh, good example for this particular statement uh, is uh, our uh, online shopping we will take uh, amazon as an online shopping so uh, almost everyone would have uh, uh, i mean uh, Um, done online shopping uh, either any 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 one of the uh, apps uh, like a Amazon or Flipkart or whatever Mintra whatever maybe it is. Uh. So suppose if uh, uh, I'm searching for a wristwatch, okay, and and I'm uh, uh, giving and uh, in the search term I'm giving a wristwatch. A prop almost all possible uh, wristwatches will be uh, uh, listed uh, in the Amazon's website. So in that, uh, suppose if I am, uh, if I choose a uh, wristwatch, for example, I, we can take an example like uh, there are two um, brands, Titan and Timex. So Titan watches are about a bit uh, expensive, whereas Timex is about uh, a little um, less expensive when compared to Titan. It is about uh, less than a thousand rupees. So suppose if I am choosing the Timex watch. And uh, uh, looking into the features of one particular Timex watch, uh, and then I log out the system. And again, if I log on to the system, the system will show me what are all the related things. So this is uh, what are all the related watches, the uh, uh, watches related to the previous search, right? So the system will understand that the this particular person uh, he's uh, given a chance of uh, expensive as well as the economic watches. He is going for an economic watch. So probably he is much interested in this Timex or something. So probably so the system will actually recommend me, uh, recommend system, recommend me the products of uh, Timex with the uh, uh, cost of less than thousand. Um, Very similar to that of the previous. So this is what is the uh, like this. Um, um, I mean this. Uh, this is how the uh, the actual uh, uh, big data is being penetrated. And decisions are being made here. Decision is actually giving the opportunities, options for the user. These are all everything is being interconnected. So, suppose if I watch one particular, uh, if I if I click on one particular uh, uh, wrist watch, and if I'm not satisfied, suppose if I get uh, all the related, very closely related watches, then definitely I will be uh, in a um, mentality that uh, I we can go to this. We can go to this. So that is how our act, our uh, online shopping itself goes. There's no. It's, it's very difficult for a person to go into an online shopping and uh, come without purchasing anything. Like everything attracts. It is because of like uh, um, the system understands what you actually look into. Whether you look into uh, suppose uh, um, uh, a jean or a t-shirt or a whatever maybe a book or whatever maybe it is. Suppose if it is going to be a book, whether it is a self uh, help book or it is a te technical book. So the system will start generating a lot and lot of uh, um, recommendations, so that uh, you will be pushed onto a situation that uh, uh, tempted to buy something uh, uh, over there. This is how this cognitive computing actually plays a very major role in penetrating the complexity of big data. Why it is big data? Because if you let just look into this uh, this Amazon uh, database. Consider uh, Amazon. Uh, I mean, just. Uh, Uh, imagine the like, uh, Amazon's database, very huge. Almost A to Z, everything is available over there. So you you just uh, consider uh, the uh, the metadata of each every data. I mean, data of each every data. Metadata means data about data. Okay. So for example, if it is a wristwatch, means what is the brand, what is the cost, um, and uh, what is the durability, and uh, what is the warranty of it. All these things are being stored for one particular data. Similarly, you have so much tons and tons of data. In that particular tons and tons of data, the system is able to make a um, decision that okay, fine, this fellow is actually looking into an economic risk watcher, and uh, it makes a recommendation uh, in that way. So that is what is the power of cognitive computing. So it's a software that combines the power of computing with a brain-like uh, intelligence to solve. Uh, uh, uh even the just a second
cognitive technologies are uh, the products of uh, the field of artificial definitely like say artificial intelligence is uh, again it is like uh, a very strong pillar on which the cognitive computing is being built so without artificial intelligence cognitive computing definitely it is not possible we can say that like uh, it's a, uh, an add on a, a very strong add on to an artificial intelligence which make the cognitive computing much more uh, uh, um, efficient so this is a uh, uh, a, a small uh, uh, life cycle of how we are going to uh, how we have gone through this cognitive system era i just shown only about uh, in the 50 year in, in a gap of 50 year time span but it's actually just a very long i mean there are a lot of things between 1900 and 1950 and 2011 and from 2011 to 2021 also we have a lot of things but uh, in order to concentrate on uh, uh cognitive computing i'm i'm just minimal minimizing and i'm showing this particular architecture so, so first initially we had this tabular system this is a calculator uh, method of uh, computing uh, slowly we moved on to a programmable era system so during this programmable era system itself actually this artificial intelligence has come into picture but uh, it has been an unsung hero we haven't appreciated it see programmable era system once uh, we we made a system uh, to uh, um, we program the system to in such a way that it order to, uh, to act uh, according to our um, uh, uh, commands then uh, automatically the system become artificially intelligent so artificial intelligence is actually a bit older concept uh, but uh, the uh, uh, the potential of the artificial intelligence was uh, not much tapped in the early uh, stages of uh, 19, 19, 1950s, 1960s, 1970s. It is because of the lack in um, uh, technological advancements. Uh, because artificial intelligence as a concept is okay, but we, we need a, a technology to uh, showcase that particular uh, concept. Right? So, to, so slowly and steadily as uh, the technology moves, we, 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 we move from uh, uh, wired to wireless, wireless to cell phones, uh, and, and, um, and nowadays we have a very good smartphones, everything, cloud, all these things uh, uh, have uh, emerged on to IoT, everything has emerged on to the past one decade. So the artificial intelligence becomes a, uh, uh, I, mean, uh, uh, I mean, it opens its wings and uh, showing its, uh, its power. And cognitive system era has actually started about uh, somewhere around 2011. I'll just share the IBM's um, um, screen how actually this uh, cognitive computing came into came into existence. And, and IBM is considered to be the pioneer of cognitive computing. And uh, IBM um, um, uh, is uh, uh, the, I mean uh, the company which actually. Uh, uh, Brought, I mean, the, I mean, which uh, which has the credit of uh, bringing this cognitive uh, computing into practice, and uh, um, and now it is being run by multiple companies. So before getting into this cognitive computing, so this is uh, the, the I mean, a uh, short uh, um, history of how this cognitive uh, systems are. So in the, in the case of programmable systems uh, era, we, we give the instruction that the system uh, acts uh, uh, according to the instructions what we give. As, as, uh, but uh, in cognitive systems era, the system acts uh, just, uh, it, uh, it mimics our human brain. Without giving the instructions, it just mimics our human brain. So that is the main difference between this programmable systems era and cognitive systems era. This is a, this is a brief overview. So before getting into this cognitive systems and how uh, actually IBM tapped this potential, we will just see the basic differences uh, between uh, artificial intelligence and cognitive computing. So before going into artificial intelligence, so we will see about algorithmic uh, computing and then we will go on to this uh, um, artificial intelligence. So algorithmic computing, again, it, it lies as the base for artificial intelligence. Uh, we given the set of uh, instructions. So what would be the inputs and what is the desired output and decision points? And finally, the optimization schemes. This is how an algorithmic computing actually works. Algorithms based upon algorithmic computing. And whereas, Cognitive computing is context aware. So according to this particular context, how the computing should actually do. So this is the context. So for example, if, uh, the, uh, the, if the person is, uh, for example, if there's, I'm, I'm ordering a, a food on a food delivery app like Swiggy. So the context over there is food. Suppose if I'm um, in that I am uh, typing like a, a starters or a, 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 I mean, um, a lunch, then the context over there is food and, and lunch. 
in that case the system should uh, actually give me the suggestions of what are all the uh, lunch uh, um, uh, available in different uh, 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 shops nearby suppose if the if the system is giving uh, the recommendations of desserts desserts ice creams or something like that uh, milkshakes then probably that is not the intention over here so what so so the, the cognitive computer is actually a context aware computing the next uh, uh, thing is dealing with uncertainty so whenever there is an so whenever there is a computing there is an uncertainty so uncertainty of uh, 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 is like uh, suppose if uh, you know the system asks the user to enter um, um, i mean uh, uh, for example uh, enter an item or enter, enter a product for, uh, to search suppose by mistake the user has entered uh, uh, just the numerals for example 1 2 3 4 5 then uh, in case of an algorithmic compute we have to give specifically um, an exception handling mechanism that 1 2 3 4 5 is like we don't have a product like this probably probably this uh, you might have um, mistyped uh, it to be a numeral uh, whereas uh, the product uh, is uh, is is about uh, uh, an alphabet so kindly uh, key in, uh, into alphabets so this is we have to feed it in, in this algorithmic computing but in the case of cognitive computing systems it is not like that so in case of uh, uncertainty the system acts very smart and structured as well as unstructured data processing the unstructured data uh, so so this is actually uh, uh, right now we will just uh, so th- i mean speaking about structured and unstructured data is itself is a very big topic uh, uh so like now we will understand the structured data is very much very well organized whereas unstructured data is an unorganized data uh, keeping it here and there and still we are able to process the same and a goal directed and uh, adaptive behavior is there in cognitive computing next uh, artificial intelligence is a simulation of human intelligence uh, and uh, exhibited by uh, machines uh, whereas cognitive computing it's a sub field of ai and refers to computing or focus on reasoning and understanding at a higher level so this is an important uh, uh, sorry uh, this is an important uh, point uh, that we have to consider the reasoning and understanding uh, uh, at a higher level uh, whereas in the, in the case of an artificial intelligence uh, um, it, it is like uh, uh, whatever is being fed to the system the system will uh, able to be understand and make intelligent decisions uh, whereas a uh, higher level of ai by just by uh, mimicking the human brain so uh, artificial intelligence is enable the uh, computer systems to perform the tasks in line with the human intelligence uh, to, through via a set of theories methods and algorithms so so if this then this if this then this this is how we actually program no so basically if you take artificial intelligence is not a very big uh, uh, what to say like uh, um, uh, it's uh, i mean uh, um uh, 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 it's not a very big deal to understand it is basically an if else only so if this particular condition what should what should the system do else if this particular condition what the system should do this is the uh, basic backbone of our artificial intelligence so here we have to give the condition if this then this then only the system will understand suppose if we leave any of the if condition the system will hang that is the uh, um, or the system will uh, come out as an unexpected error that is the limitation of artificial intelligence but in the case of cognitive computing even in the case suppose if we are not uh, able to uh, i mean suppose if uh, humans as humans if we are like uh, um, uh, forget to handle an exception then the system will be able to handle it rationally and make the decisions uh, on the spot because it mimics the human brain so uh, human brain so, so uh, like we humans are like uh, we go with the flow right uh, so we uh, nothing is structured in our life like uh, our life itself is like uh, today uh, we, uh, is there and tomorrow we don't know what is going to happen but still we go on with the flow so that is what is uh, our brain is also being structured suppose if there is a happy moment which is being happening we take it human brain is able to take it uh, suppose if there is anything suppose there is a loss of something then probably again there is a, a, a mood swings but still we are able to come come out of the same thing and we are able to survive 
that is what is the uh, beauty of human brain and that is uh, what is being mimicked in their cognitive computing so one day uh, probably this uh, artificial intelligence will sur uh, surpass the human brain in terms of uh, uh, accuracy insight and intelligence because one of the limitation of human brain is that human are uh, like we become exhausted right many times we become uh, exhausted uh, uh, like uh, um, uh, uh, like uh, in a lot a lot of situations uh, suppose if uh, if you are given too much of assignments or uh, like uh, um, uh, uh, works or tests, uh, uh, then probably there is a, a bit, uh, um, uh, what to say, a tire, tiresomeness in uh, in us, uh, in uh, students like uh, students, uh, right? So uh, th that is the natural tendency of a human being. Uh. But in the case of the system, the system will never get tired. So even uh, if, you, if you go for computing for a large uh, number of time, longer uh, duration of time, the system will be able to do it the same level of accuracy. Suppose if you give me that uh, to multiply two numbers, uh, two two digit numbers, then I will be able to multiply. And then three digit numbers, then I will be able to multiply. Like I, I will take some time and I will be able to multiply. Then suppose if you are giving me two four digit numbers, then definitely I will take some time. So whereas the system or our calculator is like, what if suppose if you give two 10 digit numbers and multiply it will definitely multiply and give me the actual give me give, give, um, the answer in a fraction of a second that is what is the uh, beauty of artificial intelligence the only disadvantage is that it lacks the uh, common sense so uh, a, a perfect mix of this particular artificial intelligence with the common sense uh, uh, human uh, intelligence will make this uh, has made this cognitive computing uh, the next uh, uh, era of computing. So this probably I have covered. It is used to augment the human uh, uh, thinking to solve co pro problems. But here, cognitive computing aims to mimicking the human behavior and adapting to human reasoning. Okay, and uh, concentrates most on providing accurate results and uh, aiming to um uh, provide a complex problem and uh, uh, able to solve complex problems in a manner similar to way the humans would solve so when you look at here it, here the concentration is on providing the accurate result suppose if uh, like uh, so the uh, artificial intelligence uh, goes more uh, focuses more and more on accuracy whereas cognitive computing focuses more and more on correctness suppose if you give like um, I mean, by mistake, if you give two inputs, two inputs which is not intended, it will again give you an output, uh, uh, an unintended output, but a very accurate output. Suppose, for example, if I uh, if I want to multiply two numbers and by mistake I give one number to be a, a, a negative number, then my uh, product of uh, positive and negative is negative. So I will give, I will get an uh, output, but uh, but that output is an accurate output. But that is not an intended output because my input is itself is wrong. But in the case of cognitive computing, suppose if I'm going to multiply to, for example, these two figures, 57 and 45 are the cost of two things. Suppose if I want to add it, uh, the cost of two products on in my cart in my online shopping. And uh, suppose you want to add it, the system will understand. Okay, this is the cost, so probably it will not be in negative. So even if I give something like the minus uh, 45 or something, the system will tell, okay, uh, th th this particular minus 45 is not uh, uh, an, um, uh, an authentic one. Probably probably you would have pressed the minus sign by mistake. Then I probably I will give a plus one. So mostly this artificial intelligence focuses upon accurate, accurate accuracy and uh, cognitive computing focuses upon uh, correctness. And our uh, focus is upon providing uh, um, correct and accurate result. So that is what is the future uh, of the uh, of, uh, computing goes on. So this is uh, the application areas of artificial intelligence. So probably all this um, Amazon, Alexa, Siri, all these things uh, and uh, digital assistants uh, are all uh, comes under um, uh, the application of artificial intelligence, computer vision, driverless cars, self-driving cars, video games, even finance. Uh, transport, logistics, art, education, you have a lot and lot. Uh, so the, the, the uh, uh, application area of artificial intelligence is like innumerable. And uh, uh, most importantly, in medicine, 
we are because of this covid 19 we have uh, uh, we, we have come to a stage of appreciating this particular artificial intelligence uh, like uh, uh, where human beings cannot go for uh, uh, doing the things so that uh, the artificial i mean robot can uh, do bots robots so robot the the, the main uh, um, um, i mean um, the uh, the uh, mechanism uh, of uh, operating this robo is actually the artificial intelligence okay so uh, during covid 19 there was a lot of challenges like uh, like uh, 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 people with the covid 19 uh, are uh, uh, advised to be quarantined uh, uh, sometimes they get uh, the hospital sometimes they are quarantined at home at home there is a possibility that they are quarantined um, uh, they are isolated in one particular room and uh, during that particular time, uh, suppose in case of a, a very uh, middle class or lower middle class family, there is only one uh, toilet available. And uh, suppose the COVID positive patient uses that particular uh, toilet. If another family member was want to use the same toilet again, then there is a possibility that the other person is also risking uh, because it is a, it, it, there is a possibility of uh, 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 this coronavirus to spread through faces also. So in, in such case, uh, the patient can also go uh, cannot go and clean that particular toilet in that because he himself is uh, ill. Again, uh, one, some uh, one of the I mean uh, the uh, the patient uh, I mean uh, the COVID positive patients uh, family members can also not do it because they might catch the disease. So in, the, in such case, you can actually have a robot to do it, robotic mechanism to. Uh, um, uh, to clean the toilet after the usage by uh, COVID positive patient, uh, uh, also and the, the next person can come and use it. This is one among the example what I'm telling. Similarly, like delivering the uh, of, um, medicines to COVID positive patients because every, it's a COVID is actually spreads through our, uh, I mean, our saliva, um, uh, so everything. So the the the, the, the uh, um, uh, frequency or uh, the, the uh, I mean, opportunity for spreading is very high. In that case, uh, uh, so human to human contact and the social distancing comes into picture. Uh, so, so we have uh, gone to a place where we can actually uh, replace the human being where the, through a robot, which is being driven by artificial intelligence. So, post COVID is also go, also going to be like a, mostly going to be like that in case of an healthcare. Because the pandemic has not been ended, uh, so now, nowadays uh, still we have some cases going on and on. Uh, so in such cases, uh, uh, we can actually employ the artificial intelligence-based robot to do certain things uh, where uh, human intervention can be reduced. Yes. So this is one important thing that we have to one important data that we have to know about uh, uh, cognitive computing. So. Uh, uh, so this is a journey onto a cognitive computing. So IBM, how uh, uh, it actually like uh, um, uh, when it uh, how this IBM uh, uh, um, adapted this cognitive computing and how it became a huge hit. This is the flow chart. So in 1996, uh, um, uh, IBM was working with uh, something on protecting nuclear stockpile. At 2001, uh, uh, world's single molecule computer circuit. Uh, uh, and, uh, and 2004, high performance computing has come into existence in Blue Gene. And 2008, uh, these are all the technologies on which uh, IBM were working in prior to cognitive computing. In 2012, um, 20 million uh, bytes of data, huge amount of data. 2011, 12 is the uh, is the is the time where the 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 uh, uh, amount of data has been doubled, doubled, tripled, uh, quadrupled. So, uh, so quintillion bytes of data and how to manage the same. And um, 2012, so this is the uh, uh, place where actually cognitive computing came. So modeling the human heart. Uh, so IBM uh, has to uh, coll collaborate uh, um, uh, with the real-time simulation of human heart to accelerate the cues for heart disease. So what uh, actually this IBM actually uh, did was, uh, um, uh, so it had a database of uh, what are all the possible heart problems. So heart heart attack is one thing, 
also probably some some uh, hole in the heart is a, is another problem and uh, we have some other problems so cardiac problems are a lot so i'm uh, modeling the human heart so just by taking the human heart and comparing it with the database uh, the system will be able to generate that possibly this is uh, the 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 patient uh, the cardiac patient will is is, uh, is uh, there's a possibility that there's higher possibility that the 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 person is with this particular disease probably uh, he is much prone to heart attack he is a, a high bp patient or something like that. Uh, so that is the point where actually this cognitive computing came into picture and ibm watson this is the uh, this one year gap is actually this was this one year of uh, time frame is actually uh the, the time frame taken by the uh, by ibm to develop this cognitive computing so based upon the um, uh um cognitive uh, i mean sorry by the uh, um uh, uh, i mean uh, the already existing cancer uh, centers uh, this uh, uh, system the ibm watson ibm watson came into existence around uh, the this particular time it will it will give uh, uh, the doctors uh, the opinions in but this second in a few seconds that, that uh, this uh, person probably he might be uh, um, uh, in a heart attack or probably he might have um, um, uh, like um, a cancer cancer again it is uh, we have we have a different stages of cancer stage 1 stage 2 stage 3 we go for this chemotherapy we recommend the uh, doctors recommend uh, uh, the patients for chemotherapy and stage 4 is something like it is out of the, the cancer has uh, uh reach uh, almost all parts of the body and this is incur incurable right so based upon uh, the medical um, uh, his whatever may be the medical records uh, the system will be able to understand and give an opinion to the doctors not only to replace the doctors it is going to give an opinion to the doctors that um, uh, uh, probably this person is uh, suffering from uh, a cancer probably a stage 1 cancer uh, uh so 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 the corrective action could be taken probably the medicines could be given uh, uh stage through probably we have to move, go for a surgically surgically removing that particular part or whatever may be it is stage 3 definitely we have to go for chemotherapy stage 4 is there any possibility that the uh, that we can actually save the patient so all these things were uh, being taken care, taken uh, uh, um, um, as a part of this ibm watson's project and that is where the actually this uh, cognitive computing came into picture and uh, uh, based upon so there are about few um, um, uh, 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 concepts in this synapse so, so, so synapse is actually a brain inspired uh, chips so um, uh, synapse is nothing but so, so human brain is made up of uh, neurons so probably you would have come across the term called as neural networks uh, and deep deep neural networks so your deep learning is basically based, based upon this neural networks so what is this actually this neural networks basic uh, building block is a neuron so a neuron it is being uh, connected to another neuron this connection between the two neurons is called to be a synapse okay and uh, what is the beauty of this particular synapse is that uh, during my uh, 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 i mean uh, 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 introduction of mind you would have uh, uh, hear that i am the founder and chairman of albert einstein engineering and research lab and i am very very good very fond of uh, albert einstein um, i have a great respect for this uh, uh, researcher Uh, uh and everyone knows that albert einstein sir albert einstein is a very great researcher and uh, research has been made on posthumously after his death uh, the the brain of uh, dr albert einstein was uh, taken into uh, taken and it was been studied by uh, a medical doctor uh, because uh, i mean what was the reason for his uh, high level of iq and intelligence and uh, it has been uh, said that uh, uh it has been said in the literature that uh, the number of synapses i mean the neuro neuron to neuron connection uh, in the newtons uh, sorry in um, einstein's brain was uh, higher than that of the normal brain so normal brain we have uh, in a normal brain we have uh, this many millions of synapses but in the case of uh, newton's brain it is like a, a, a bit higher and that is why um, uh, einstein is, uh, is considered to be Uh, 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 I mean, uh, a very unique, uh, a very outstanding uh, uh, scientist of the um, uh, of that particular uh, era. 
Okay, so that is all about uh, the synapse, and this is about brain inspired computing. So by this, uh, what we can actually uh, understand is that by increasing the number of uh, synapses, I mean the connection between the neurons, we can actually make uh, the system intelligent. Because Abraham, uh, so, uh, sorry, uh, Albert Einstein was an intelligent person, and the reason for his intelligence was uh, um, the increased number of synapses. So just by this, uh, from this, we can actually we are actually learning that uh, by increasing the number of uh, interconnection between the neurons, uh, uh, we can actually go for. I mean, uh, the synapses are nothing, nothing but the interconnection between the neurons. We can go for increasing the brain-inspired chips. So emulate the brain's abilities for perception and action and cognition by increasing the number of connections. And uh, uh, simulation, computer uh, simulation of uh, uh, human brain and Excalate computing. And uh, within a few slides, I will complete it because the time I'm running out of the time. So Watson uh, combines uh, uh, the transformation capabilities to deliver a new world of experience. So, so understands the natural language and human self computing as the first step of cognitive. Second, it, be, it generates an evidence-based hypothesis. So this is a, again a backpropagation neural network. So evidence-based hypothesis. So, so in, in uh, um, history, in, in the past uh, history, this, the, the, in the, I mean, in the, um, in the past uh, uh, in, in instances, this is what has happened. So in future, if uh, suppose the particular this instance has been have this happens, probably the behavior should be like this or much more better. You just consider human. Uh, so we everyone we all make mistakes. Like definitely uh, at some point of time, or nobody is perfect. Um, uh, as uh, uh, Brian Tracy, the author of Maximum Achievement, he says, so no one is perfect. No person is a perfect person. So everyone makes mistake at some point of the time. Okay. Uh, but uh, our intelligence. So how uh, um, how so so, so there are, so let us consider there are two person who makes the same mistakes at the same point of time, and how we can consider one person to be intelligent than the other? I can say that one person is intelligent than the other. Suppose if the same uh, situation arises and the person understands, learns from the mistake, and uh, does not commit the same mistake again during uh, the second time. Then we can say that uh, probably the, the the person has learned from his mistake and is much more intelligent. And slowly, slowly, the intelligence is being built onto the uh, 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 the person through a lot of experiences, and finally he becomes a wise person. That is how the, the same thing. That is the same thing over here. Okay. So based upon the feedback, so what better can be done next? Okay. Uh, so the, the so that is actually the. The meaning of an intelligent person, right? So everyone makes mistakes. The person who sticks on to the particular mistake and uh, justifies the his or her mistakes, then probably like there's no part uh, in uh, I mean uh, de developing or coming out uh, to become an intelligent person. The person who admits this mistake, yes, there is a problem. Uh, there is a mistake which has happened, and probably I will learn from that mistake. And uh, similar type of instances, if it comes, then probably. I, uh, I will uh, use my learned knowledge. Then you 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 may, you say that the person is intelligent. Similarly, you make the system intelligent through this feedback uh, uh, loop. Okay. So probably there are a lot of other uh, slides uh, which is available. And since 11:50 uh, is the time which is being given to me, and probably I am al already uh, late by 11:55. Uh, so I will just uh, finish my talk over there, and finally I will. So, with these uh, a few words, uh, I actually uh, thank all the participants, uh, students, uh, uh, professors, um, uh, scholars uh, who has listened to my um, uh, talk very patiently. And at this juncture, I would like to uh, thank. Uh, uh, ready? Satin, ready? Just a second. Just a second. I would like to thank uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Sapna Rakesh, uh, the director of the uh, course, and uh, Dr. Uh, Gagan Varshenni, chairperson of BCA. Um, so uh, I don't know Hindi. That is the problem over here. Uh, okay, no, sorry no, if I'm. Uh, I'm no, I'm, no, no, no. Uh, mispronouncing the name and um, 
um uh, my, my uh, personal thanks to dr rakesh roshan sir for uh, extending a personal invitation for this uh, um a uh, one day uh, national seminar and uh, uh, thank you roshan sir. Uh, thank you everyone for patient listening thank you thank you sir thanks a lot most welcome sir